Hello, my name is Anne Kent. I'm a registered dietitian and the owner of Peas and Toppiness. Today, I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite recipes, which is an easy recipe for kale chips. These are so crispy and you do not need an air fryer, you don't need a convection oven, you don't need any special equipment. I'm gonna give you a few tricks on how to make these kale chips super crispy. The reason I'm focusing on kale right now is because it is springtime finally here in Colorado and kale is a wonderful spring seasonal vegetable. Kale does really well in cooler weather. So we'll see it a lot in the spring and in the fall. This is one of the best times that you can enjoy kale. When you choose the kale that you'd like for kale chips, you're going to want the freshest, crispiest kale available. Um, we don't necessarily want baby kale because we do want a little bit more of the fiber in, in the kale so that it holds up and, and crisps up a little bit more. So this, you can see that it has some structure in it. Um, whereas this kale that's been sitting in my refrigerator for a while is a little bit more wilted, a little bit more limp. And so um, this is not going to make as crispy of kale chips as the fresher leaf would. The first thing when you are choosing your kale, make sure that you are getting kale that is nice and crispy. Um, the fresher, the better, and you'll want to use it right away. I have prepped most of my kale uh, on our little sheet pan here, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. So when you prep kale, the, the fibrous stem is not edible. You'll want to discard this. You can compost it, you can throw it away, but you do not want to eat this uh, stem. It's just too tough. What you'll want to do is you'll hold the base of the stem and then with your thumb and forefinger, you're going to pinch here and you're literally going to pull that kale down all the way and you're just going to remove it from the stem. So I'm going to put that with my other stems and now you have this nice leafy kale. At this point, you'll just either want to tear it into bite-sized pieces or if you're more comfortable or you have a lot, you can also use your chef's knife and just chop it up into roughly one inch pieces. I estimate that one kale leaf is about one cup of kale. It's a good ratio if you are trying to figure out how much kale to buy in the store. So our recipe for kale chips is eight cups of kale leaves, and I'm just going to toss those on my baking sheet, spread them out here, and then we're going to use two tablespoons of olive oil. This is going to help make it nice and crispy. We're just going to drizzle that on. And here's number two. You don't have to use the full two tablespoons if you don't want to. Uh, I do like the flavor of that olive oil. I'm keeping this simple. My recipe calls for just a half teaspoon of salt. You can definitely adjust this according to taste. So if you are looking for a little bit lower sodium, you don't have to add all of this. You can also add other spices that you would like. One of my favorite tricks for spices is to use the same spices that you would use in your uh, main dish. So if you are serving, for example, like Mexican food, you could toss some cilantro or some cumin on here. Okay, so we're going to spread it out. It's all kind of evenly spaced. We don't want a lot um, touching. You can see that I'm using a very large pan. This is a half baking sheet. It's a really nice size and it has a lip so that none of our kale is going to fall off. I've preheated the oven to 350 degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I set the timer for eight minutes. Kale chips usually take between eight and 10 minutes. They uh, cook really quickly at the end. So I'll want to keep a special eye on them at the very end. Steam moisture is the opposite of crispiness. So anytime we can reduce the amount of water in our recipe, that is how we are going to get the crispiest kale available. That's also, if you think about it, why deep fat frying works so well. If you've ever mixed together oil and water, like for example, oil and vinegar in a salad dressing, you know that they naturally separate. So if you fry something, if you deep fat fry something, it naturally doesn't have any water in it. It repels the water and that's why you can get such a crispy chip. So we're trying to do this without all of the added fat from the deep fat frying. And so um, any way we can get rid of some of that moisture and prevent the steaming of the chips, the better. One of the tricks for getting crispy kale is to open the oven and let out a little bit of steam. So as I open this, you might even be able to see there's a lot of steam coming out. So that's really good. I'm going to do this just a couple more times during the course of cooking, and that's going to help crisp up the leaves. The other things that I've done to reduce moisture are to make sure that the leaves are completely dry when I put them on the pan. Uh, if it's been difficult to get all of the moisture off after washing, you could just let them sit on the, on the pan for a little bit before putting them in the oven. My timer is about to go off, so we are going to check these now. All right, here are our kale chips. They've been going about eight minutes and they're still a little bit soft. I like to actually touch these. They're not hot because they're very thin, um, but they're still pretty moist here. So I'm gonna let them go in the, uh, in the oven a couple more minutes. 
So if you have a recipe like this one that says that you should cook this for eight to 10 minutes, you'll always want to start with a lower number on, on that time and then add additional minutes as um, it tells you in the recipe. For example, in this recipe, you're gonna see um, once the kale chips are crispy to the touch, then it's time to take out the kale chips. Okay, we've waited another two minutes. Let's see what this looks like. All right, let's check these. So oh, they're starting to get a little bit more crisp. You can literally hear them when they get crispy, they'll start to feel like, like chips. They don't quite, so I'm gonna put them back in. Okay, now you can start to see they're getting light and fluffy. So as they move around here, we've got some nice crispiness there. You can even hear that crispiness. That is the kale chip being nice and crispy. If you do need to store them, you can store them in an airtight container. You can store them at room temperature for a day or two. You can also store them in the freezer and they'll, they'll keep their crispiness just a little bit better. Um, but honestly, I would recommend to eat them right away. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. You can find me uh, on my website, peasandhoppiness.com. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at peasandhoppiness. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful week. Happy seasonal produce eating and we'll catch you soon.